What, what, why did you write the book? Well, I, I wrote the book because, as I said, I've been doing this for a very, very long time. I was one of the early people in the U.S. doing this stuff, and I've learned a great deal over time. And I really just wanted to share what I learned with other people to see if I couldn't increase the success rate of Kaizen in the U.S. I, I look at it you know, and say, gee, a lot of people have tried this or are thinking of trying it, but there's not too many that are really successful because they, they, they have this idea that it's just a bunch of tools and they can pull the tools out and use them when they want to. Right. Or you know, what, what you normally see is because people don't see lean as a strategy, they see it as a bunch of tools or whatever. So they figure they can they can do this. They can drop a lean system on top of their current batch system, and not change the batch system, not change anything else. And and so I just wrote the book because I felt that if I passed on some of the knowledge I've had and how to look at this as a business thing and a strategy, not as a bunch of tools, that maybe I could help an, a number of companies to be successful where right now they're not. And that was and and that was the the, the main reason, the other reason, the other thing was just to also try and overcome the hurdle that says that that lean is a manufacturing thing. When I look at it as a business thing, it's good for any business. I've I've, I've done lean in in probably fourteen, fifteen different countries, thirty, forty different companies over time. Um, so I, I've seen this just about everywhere. I've done it in in hospitals. I've done it in all kinds of different places. Um, so all I was trying to do with the book was to sort of pass on the knowledge that I've learned. And, and try and see if we can't break people of the habit of thinking as lean as a manu only manufacturing thing and within that only a bunch of tools mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a strategy. And the interesting thing that I found so far from the book is that the comment that I get the most is, gee, Art, you, you look at lean as a strategy. We all think it's a bunch of tools. And that, that's, to me, that's, it's unusual. I didn't expect that kind of response, but it's also very sad because... This is the best strategy you could have. Uh, and that's the point about making lean your strategy. And I'll give you an interesting example. Ten years ago, uh, Virginia Mason Hospital out in Seattle, Washington, yeah. <coughs> decided well, to think. Yeah, they, they, uh, they started thinking about this. And they, I talked to them on a video conference once. And then, then they came. They brought 30 people to Warmel to, to see this. This is a hospital. Now, they right. brought the third. Top 30 people came to Wyoming for two days. They had to, they flew from Washington to Hartford, Connecticut, and we spent you know a couple of days with them. And we, what I what I told them to start out with, I said, look, you know, we're we use raw material that's either steel or plastic, and we run it through a series of processes. We punch holes in it, we attach stuff to it, we put it in a box, and we sell it. You do exactly the same thing, except your raw material isn't steel or plastic; it's a human body. You run it through a bunch of processes. You drill holes in it. You attach stuff to it. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to put it in a box at the end. You got to put it in a car. But then you put it in a car and send it home. So it's the same thing. And then we spent the next couple of days showing them how our processes moved the raw material through the system, right? And they said we can do the same thing in a hospital. And they've done a fantastic job. And <clears throat> as a as a I can give you all kinds of statistics on what they've done. But the bottom line statistic for them is in the year 2000, before they started, they the hospital made 700,000 bucks. In the year 2010, made 41 million bucks. But they've also got better patient outcomes, better quality, better you, you name it. They've they've improved it. They've been very very impressive. So it just says you can do this in any business if you think of it as your strategy. The, six, the results that you can get and what what Are comes dramatic. out of it, fantastic. They're okay, fantastic. so tell me how you break through. Well, I think, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, there's, for, for, for any of this stuff to work, three things have to be present uh, when you look at it as a business. The first thing is you have to see lean as your strategy. The second thing is it has to be led by, from the top, it has to be led by the CEO or the leader or the plant manager or whoever happens to run the particular operation. It has to be the out front, hands-on leader. And the third thing that has to be present is you have to understand that what you're trying to transform or change is the people. And the people are the most important part of the whole thing. And so if you start down a lean path and you start without thinking of those three things, your chances of being successful are going to be really small. Because okay, so i got to ask you a question. So you say that really the goal is to transform the people. It's not to do a Kaizen and fix the process. We're trying to transform the people, right? That's did correct. I, did I get that right? 
Yeah, that's correct. I, I know I'm interrupting you, but how do you transform the people? What's the what's the secret sauce of making that happen? You've done it so many times, right. and that's what everybody wants to know. Right. Well, it's a combination of things. I think the, let's start with leadership and strategy. Okay. If 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 people know that your your strategy is lean and it's continuous improvement and improving all your value adding things, they at least know what's expected of them. So that's a big step. If the leader is constantly pushing this, is sort of the, the, the lean zealot, if you will, that's right. constantly pushing this forward, they get the idea that they better get on the train. They better get, better get doing this stuff. This is not the flavor of the month. It's serious. This is that's the right. direction of the company. That's right. And if you don't want to do it, then go someplace else because this is what we're going to do here and this is going to become our culture. And so you're so, comfortable with that. So basically you just said, hey, if you don't want to do it, get the hell out of here. Absolutely. Okay. Because... You can't have someone dragging you backwards, and right. I think one of the one of the key roles of a leader is that if he has big resistance from people, you know, in the middle or upper management, the, the leader has to get either get that person turned around or let them go because Got they're going to drag everybody else backwards. And so then you get to the people part and the transforming the people. If they understand those rules that I just said and they understand what we're trying to do, and then you start to teach them and put them on a lot of kaizans, what can happen, right? And let me give you a couple of examples. Okay, so but I want to I, I want to hear the examples, but I want to make sure I'm clear on what you just said. So the first step was, the, as the executive, you have to get your leadership team aligned. Everybody's in a line, going the same direction, agrees with the direction you're taking the company, and you get rid of those people that don't agree with the philosophy of making lean a strategy. Is that right? Absolutely. Then the right. next step you said was, then you have to train people at all different levels throughout the company on what lean is and let them experience a Kaizen so they experience the benefit of it and then go ahead. Now you, yeah. they're well, I, I, you, you missed a step in between. Okay. You, first you have to make sure they all understand that this is the way we're going, this is our strategy. Okay. The second thing that's really important is, is what the leader does and that the leader has to be really leading this stuff and really talking it up all the time. Not and delegating it. it. Not delegating. It's not like, it's not like I, I bring you all in a room and I say, okay, we're going to go down to lean strategy and, and I'm going to introduce you to my consultant and yeah. he's going to tell you about it and I'll be back this afternoon <laughs> and then I, I leave the room and I come back at four o'clock and, and I haven't heard a thing he said all day and the first thing I say is, wow, wasn't that exciting? And they all look at you like, <laughs> you're not <laughs> part of this, dude. This is a joke. You're not going to do this. Mm -hmm. So the, the, they need to understand that the leader is really leading this and pushing it. So that's number two. Okay. And the third thing is getting the people converted. I think you it's it's a question of you know, getting them on a lot of Kaizans, having them experience this, giving them some training on it. On it. But it's not a really a training exercise, it's a doing exercise. Right. For example, when I first went to Wire Mole, <clears throat> we had a lot of different types of equipment, one of which was a rolling mill. So we had a bunch of rolling mills to roll big pieces of steel, you know, steel into shapes. And, you know, we had one uh, that was called a rafted mill. And I said, well, how long does it take to change this thing over? And they said, oh, 14 hours, you know, and, and I stood there and I said, well, no, 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 we have to get it under 10 minutes. And of course, you know, they look at you and they say, how do we get this guy as the CEO? Yeah, He's an idiot. Exactly. You can't change this over in under 10, in under 10 minutes. It takes us 14 hours. It's taken us 14 hours for the last eight years or 10 years ever yeah, since we owned this machine. So, you know, then we started doing the Kaizen sign and we did one Kaizen, we did another Kaizen, we altered the machine a little bit. Anyway, long story short, we got it down to six minutes, right? Now, 14 hours to six minutes, I, I've got some converts already. I've got converts yeah, now I bet you that, do. that say, well, gee, maybe he's not so nutty after all. Maybe we should listen to this guy on the next one. We took another, uh, oh, oh, and a funny follow-up story to that one about, oh, I don't know, six months or a year after we had got it to six minutes on a regular basis. Somebody comes in and, and, and there was a metalworking magazine where there was about a five-page article in there about the same exact mill that some company had, it was the same brand, same size, everything, and they were making parts for the automobile industry and they, had, they were bragging for five pages about getting this set up from 14 hours to six hours. And my guys came in and said, well, but Art, we're doing it in six minutes. And I just said, yeah, be quiet. Don't tell anybody that. Okay, so Art, so I, again, the strategy that you're laying out is so fabulous. I know I'm probably going to mess it up, but I want to make sure I never forget what you said. So once again, you got the leader that makes sure it's a strategy. This is where we're going. You get the management aligned. 
you get the people involved in Kaizans right. for the express purpose of not actually changing the process, but showing them the power of changing the process so you convert them. Did that's I get correct. that? Is that, is that kind of? Yeah, it's, that, that's correct. I mean, you're going to get all these great process changes and all the benefits from that along the way. But what you're really trying to do is to train your people how to think differently. Right. You know, if, if you think about focusing on, I said before, most companies take their value adding for granted. So as part of the strategy, we're going to be focusing on changing and improving our value adding. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you start looking at the value adding and how do you improve it, I can guarantee you that the best ideas of how to make it better and simpler are going to come from the people that are doing the work. Right. But they need some support in that. Probably, chances are, they've been telling you for years that you ought to do this and why can't we do this and nobody's listened to them. You've ignored them. Right. And now you've got a Kaizen process where not only are you not ignoring them, but you're following up and do, implementing their ideas on the spot. Right now, we're doing this stuff. Right, so you made a very close distinction because you said you're not going to train them on Kaizen, they're going to do Kaizen, right? right? And right. That, was not, a, that was a very important distinction, wasn't it? Right. It's not, you know, we, we would give them a, a little refresher or little tips on, you know, what are we going to do like the Friday before a week of Kaizen started, maybe Friday afternoon for a couple of hours would go through some of the tools and some of the terminology and the sheets we were going to use and all that just to refresh them. But basically, this is all learning by doing. And... You know, when you say, okay, here's a process, we want to bring the setup time down by a lot, um, the best way to do that is to do it. And and if you got the people on the team that, that start to do this, and then it, they just can't believe it. By the end of the week, they're like, wow, I can't, I can't believe what I just saw, what we just accomplished. But it really sticks with them. And then they get on the next Kaizen, and they have some other great result. And then they get on another Kaizen, and they have... And pretty soon, you're starting to change the culture about how people think about it. Absolutely. Things. So here's so it's not a bunch of tools. It's not. I mean, one of the things that I think that we've gotten way off the track on is is that when we first started out. You know, lean. When I first started, it wasn't called lean. It was just in time, or right. it was the Toyota production system. <clears throat> and then, you know, Womack and Jones came around with lean thinking, and so we had the term lean. And I thought that was a better term. The problem was that we started out as lean thinking, and then it became what we ever commonly known today as lean manufacturing. And I, I think that's really tragic because what it does, if you call it lean manufacturing, then even in manufacturing companies, the CEO a lot of time thinks, well, this is a manufacturing thing. I've got to delegate, delegate it down to my VP of operations. He doesn't think of it as a strategic thing. He thinks of it as something that he can do to maybe reduce his head count or free up a little space or get some inventory reduction or something like that. But he doesn't think of it as a strategy. And so I would say if someone asked me, what's lean? I'd say it's a, it's a strategy that can apply to any business. It's not just for manufacturing. It's not a manufacturing thing at all. In fact, my experience is that lean works better in non-manufacturing companies, partly because they've never done much of this kind of thing. And most, right. manufacturers have all, most manufacturing companies have always been working on how to get more productive. Well, where it's a great way to you know, outperform your competition and grow your business. And... So I never looked at it as a tools thing at all. I always looked at it as a strategic thing, very, very strategic thing, something that would help me improve my business, and that's always been the case. It's very interesting when I hear you speak because, you know, I know a lot of executives, a lot of leaders, a lot of business owners, you know, they're just trying to uh, get that 5% growth per year, that 10% growth, and or maybe even maintain in a climate like this. But it sounds to me like for the most part of your career, you've always far excelled the statistical norms because right. you've had this weapon, as you would call it, of right. lean. Is that pretty accurate? Yes, that's very accurate. And, and the reason is, you know, if you think about it, most businesses, most people, the one thing that they take for granted is their value-adding activities. Mm -hmm. For example, if you went into a business and, and you said, well, you have a six-week lead time, and what you're going to be told is, yeah, that's correct, but we've tried for years and years, and we can't get it any better than that. And here's 25 reasons why that's true. So those value-adding activities are taken for granted. And then the strategy is put together um, to overcome those disadvantages that you have. And as a result, you know, you're trying to make your customer conform to your six-week lead time all the time. Right. <clears throat> Whereas if you look at it from the lean perspective and you say, well, no, 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 we don't need a six-week lead team. We need a one-day lead time or a two-day lead time. And we know what steps to take and what things to do to change that. 
then my strategic options improve dramatically when I do that. By changing and focusing on my own value-adding activities and fixing those, I can therefore deliver more value to my customer than the other guy can. And at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about. It's, it's can you deliver more value to your customers than your com competitors can over long, long periods of time? And if you can, you're going to grow. You're going to gain market share and you're going to grow and you're going to do that even in pretty weak, flat economies like we have right now. I have one last question for you. I could go on and on. I mean, we could learn so much from you. What is the number one characteristic, if there is one, of people that get lean and effectively implement it? Well, that, that's a great question. I don't know that if I, I, I can give you a number one characteristic. Right. I, I think, though, that it, it's easier to think of it almost the other way, which is, who is unlikely to do this? Mm. And, and, and then, then let's come back and try and answer your question sure. that way. Um, I mean, if, if you're in a certain percentage of the population are very insecure people, it's just, it's just their human sure. nature. And those same percentage wind up being CEOs at some point. I've worked for several guys that were massively insecure, but they got to a very high position. Now, a guy like that, he needs to control all the outcomes all the time because right. he doesn't want to be seen as, and, and lean requires constant leaps of faith. You're going to try something that may not work. You know, you're going to try something where everybody says, you're stupid, you can't do this. You know, a 14-hour setup, I want it to be under 10 minutes. They all say you're stupid. So you have to be willing to say, no, 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 we're going to do this. The insecure guy wouldn't take the risk. The same is true for the command and control guy. There's a lot of people that manage by sort of command and control. You think about the military or whatever. And the command and control kind of manager, when something goes wrong, the first question that they ask is, who? Who did that? Because they need to punish somebody. They, you know, that's, that's the way they think. And so it's really hard for them to do lean as well. So I think that the ideal guy that, that does lean is just somebody who says, look, I want to use this as a strategy to improve my business. That's why I'm here. I think it will really work, and I'm going to push it. And I'm going to stay with it. I'm going to take all the leaps of faith. I'm going to take all the risks. I, I don't care if I fail a bunch of times along the way, but I'm going to keep going after it because I think this will really help me. And there's enough evidence there of people that have been extremely successful. Think about Wiremold, 2,500% increase in, in equity value over only 10 years. Um, you know, to say that, well, that's worth going after. Yeah. So I think I think you need somebody who is um, not afraid to try things. Who um, is I think you need to be a pretty good people person. You need to relate to your people. You need to you need to uh, get to the level where everybody's on the team. There's no executives or there's no everybody's sort of just part of the team that does this. And and I think that uh, someone like that that's a problem solver and someone that wants to be successful, a competitive person. Um, is probably like the ideal person to do lean. So I translated that by you need someone who's secure and not insecure. You need someone right. who's, who feels comfortable in their own skin and is not worried about being wrong or being shown up in front of anyone. And you right. need someone that loves people and believes that people have potential and that they're not the only one in the world that has the answer. 